Hey everybody, welcome back to my garden. So this month I am starting my April garden tours. Uh, yesterday I actually did the tour, it was the fourth of the month. So um, it is April 5th today and I wanted to just make an introduction because yesterday I accidentally deleted half of my video. Um, but every month of this year I am recording um, my garden as it looks um, each month and it's just kind of a digital record of everything going on what I'm planting what did well what didn't do well just so I can kind of remember and I as if I'm filming it anyway I might as well show everybody else um, but first this is Piper she's our new bunny she's so cute and she's getting lots and lots of veggies in the garden and she goes and plays in there every day when I'm out here um, and I put that I need a gate for it, but I put that table so she can't get out. Everywhere else is secured with chicken wire, but she can get, can't get out that. So she's going to play while I record my backyard garden tour. So um, let me turn the camera around now and I'll show you what's going on in my vegetable garden here in Zone B, Tampa Bay, Florida. So right off the bat, we have lots of things growing on both sides of my fence here. Um, I have my gladiolus has all come up. I have sweet peas planted um, and there is red tatsoi growing in here. Um, the red tatsoi is finally starting to put on a little bit of growth. Um, it's been super small up until this point and it's been in the ground for like a month um, as a seed. I started as seed like a month ago. Um, but we will see how that goes. That's an experiment. I have it growing in the other part of my garden and it's much bigger already. Um, so this bed is going to evolve into a family birth flower bed. So um, I mentioned last month I have a tattoo on my arm and each of my family members birth flowers are on it and I thought that would be a pretty cool idea for a garden bed. So that is what I'm doing here. So right now, gladiolus and sweet peas are about the only thing that I have in the ground that could be blooming soon. Um, I will add the other ones as the year goes on. So this side is just about the same. You'll see I have lots of Biden's Alba blooming. Um, I need to come out here and mow. I do leave the Biden's Alba for the, the winter time because it is such a... Um, great nectar source for butterflies and bees here in Florida. Um, it is a native wildflower. It just, as most people know, is very seedy. The same goes for this is um, called cudweed. It is a native wildflower as well. It's not a very pretty one, but it is the host plant for the red admiral butterfly. So I will leave that as much as possible. Um, here we have some coral honeysuckle blooming. I have this along this whole corner. There's my pineapples. I'm going to be getting two pineapple babies this year. Oh, look, some fleabane actually in my yard. Oh, I love fleabane so much. It's so pretty. In my backyard garden tour, I will show you all of it blooming. But it's not been in my actual yard yet in the fenced in part. So this is exciting. Um, but I'm going to have one pineapple there and another pineapple back there, at least two this year. So we'll walk in the garden now. So I have the red salvia all in bloom still. Um, my pigeon pea is blooming like crazy. I had cut this back about, I don't know, two months ago. You see oh, right there. Um, and it's flushed out with all this beautiful growth and I took cuttings no I didn't take cuttings of this one I grew from seed four more plants that I have growing elsewhere now I'm pretty excited about that it's already putting on some green peas here um, let's see I'm almost done with all my seeds everything that needs to go in the ground is in the ground this is kind of like my hodgepodge corner because until that papaya tree goes, I'm not even going to worry about doing something different. 
but the papaya tree is growing a new branch. It's more like a papaya stump at this point. We're gonna see what happens. Um, these are all Everglade tomatoes, and this is exactly how I let them grow however they want to because they are prolific if you just let them be. And like this, like if I don't want that there, I'll just pull those up. I have so many growing that they're like weeds almost, but I do eat a lot of them during the season. Let's see, over here I have my rosemary still going strong. All four sides of these trellises have Kentucky pole beans on them. They're all doing really well. Uh, I have a couple of sugar snap peas on here um, climbing. There's definitely peas on there to eat. So we will enjoy those. Those are like my snacking plants. Anytime that there's only one or two plants, it's not really, you know, sufficient for a four family uh, meal. <laughs> um, over here, all of the cottage garden type things are starting to grow pretty nicely. I have dill, calendula, dara, there's chives down there. Um, there's a, a lavender that I planted. There's um, bachelor button, more dill. Um, so all of this is going to flower. To be honest, I don't know what this is. Is this a goldenrod? This might be a weed. I have to look and see what that is. Um, there's more carrots over there. A pot of dill. I'm going to let all that flower. The carrots, we've gotten a new bunny, so the bunny has been eating lots of carrots, lots of fresh veggies. Um, these two pots have my blackberries, and they're starting to put off new growth and even a couple flowers. Um, I have carrots growing on both sides of there. There's some calendula, some salvia. Um, there's a couple wildflowers mixed in there. Uh, bachelor buttons, salvia, more uh, beans. The beans are starting to flower and produce, which is super exciting. There's a baby one. I've been picking them a little bit from that side over there. I succession planted them. Um, so I planted that side, then this side, and then those two. I'm almost regretting succession planting them because I'm not... I mean, maybe it'll pick up soon, but I'm not getting enough at once to do anything with yet, so we will see. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's all an experiment. My potting table is still looking good. This thing is really, I mean, it's got water spots on it, but the table itself is holding up because I've covered it, which is good. This plant is droopy right now from the sun. But it's that little annual and sage pot that I put together. Um, over here, in this chair, I have the artichoke bed with the rosemary and yarrow and alyssum all growing. You'll see I, know, I put down straw um, and on all the beds. This was just to keep the moisture in a little better. It has not been raining here in Florida um, at all. So I've been watering a couple times a day in here. Um, and so I needed to make sure I got my, <clears throat> my beds covered in some kind of, um, uh, mulch. So I chose to go with straw, although the straw that I picked up had seeds in it, which it shouldn't. So that's what all of this is. It's all like hay grass growing. So beware Straw is not supposed to have seeds, so it doesn't sprout, but you could get a bag that is not as clean as it should be, but it's fine. It's easy enough to pull out, and it's more organic matter that'll go into the soil. Um, I have the three artichokes there, one there. There's a tiny one hiding if it still lived. Um, these are going to get really big and fill in this area, along with the rosemary. The alyssum is going to bloom. This, um, or the yarrow, I mean, this alyssum is still doing great. This yarrow is blooming. Beautiful. <clears throat> so 
excuse me. Um, this is the Easter Bonnet Alyssum. Um, it is very small compared to normal Alyssum, although it is really pretty. I would like to see it spread by seed to see how that goes, because that's why these plants get so big. They just constantly are spreading. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's my first time growing that one. But this whole area is filling in like I wanted it to. Um, kind of a no-fuss area that still has uh, food growing and pollinator activity and all of the above. So uh, let's look over here. Just another view of the arches. The two key lime trees are doing well. They made it great through the winter. Um, this bed is got lots of bunny snacks. Lettuce is um, just, I scattered a gourmet lettuce blend in here. So the bunny's eating fresh every day. So are we if we want a salad. Got some greens popping back up in here. Um, the onions here and over there we got a jalapeno the jalapenos doing well um once it starts raining i expect this to ramp up although it is producing i'm just gonna leave it i seeded some sunflowers in here and some zinnias um so once stuff starts to die down i still have beauty in here because this will end up being an art, not an artichoke, a uh, okra bed. This guy is coming to the end of its life. By next month, it'll be gone because it's gone to seed and all the seed is ripening. None of, a, none of it is ready yet. You'll know when it's ready because the seed pods turn brown and they you can hear the seeds inside them, kind of. Um, let's see over here well first of all there's my nasturtium that grew from last year's seed and i didn't do anything to it um it was just kind of seeded or got enough light finally and decided to grow so i left it there there's a couple of sunflowers growing in there um back there i have some fennel and some oregano. That's kind of just a nothing really organized yet. I haven't decided what I want to do with it. Um, but I got the fennel for like 50 cents for all six little plants. And five of them lived. So I'm trying it out. <laughs> um, in this bed, we have just like a, you know, a hodgepodge of things. There's self-seeded basil all over my garden that I leave. This is pineapple basil. Um, I have a holy basil growing in here. I actually think, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to take this leaf off of this and so it gets a little more sun. This holy basil uh, will grow quite big and this uh, mustard is crowding it. I'll give this to the bunny. We have a couple leftover cabbages that are still finishing. There's lots of, uh, these are ground cherries. So I've never grown regular ground cherries. I grew pineapple ground cherries last year and I really liked them. So we're gonna try the regular kind and see what they're like. Um, there is sweet potato popping up in here, which I give to the bunny a lot. Um, there's zinnias growing. Um, last year this bed was a huge zinnia bed. Like I'm surprised they didn't just come up on their own. Um, this is where I sowed the other red tatsoi, which is doing much better over here than it is in the front. It probably gets more sun, and this is better soil. So we're testing that out. Um, see more ground cherries. I got some more bok choy. I don't know if my phone cut off, but I have some more bok choy growing. Some mini bok choy. I want to make some more kimchi with that to last me through the rest of the year until it gets cooler again so I can make more because I am obsessed with it. Um, so these plants here are all status. Um, it's the apricot status that I grew in my um, winter sowing trial. And if you look, let me zoom in here, it's starting to flower. It gets these 
bracts on it and then the flowers are inside of it so it looks almost like it should be like seaweed or something but that's pretty exciting because I I want like I said I wanted to bring lots of flowers in to the vegetable garden this year and so far so good like I have the alyssum there that stand of yarrow right there just just take a look just so pretty and like I said yarrow is completely medicinal herbal you can use it the pollinators love it it's an all-around like wonderful plant to have plus it's pretty um, I have carrots and onions over there a sunflower and then there's a plant over there that I found out was a native wildflower so I'm leaving it forgot the name of it but we're gonna leave it there and there's another tomato growing that one looks really healthy so oh I just hit myself on the trellis <laughs> So I'm gonna leave that. Let me back up a little. Um, these are tromboncino squash. They're starting to do really well. Is that an actual squash? Oh, I think it is. Oh, look. Is this a squash? It is. So look, that's how they look when they first come out. So I've had flowers all come up on here. Oh, here's another one. But I haven't seen a fruit yet, so sweet i'm gonna have veggies so apparently this does really well in florida in our warm climate so that's why i'm trying it i will let you know how it goes it's like a zucchini type uh squash but it's super long um got some sunflowers some zinnias this pepper looks dead that pepper looks alive we'll see um coming over here all that yarrow, step over it. There's nasturtiums growing here, more tromboncino. There's that mustard green that's so pretty. It's going to seed. I will not need to buy greens seeds next year <laughs> at all. Um, and so what I'm most excited about um, is this, let me go slow border here so like I said it's all covered in straw because I seeded things and it's been so hot that I wanted to make sure everything was staying really moist while it germinated this straw is just going to break down and go right in, into the soil improve the nutrients of the soil and to be honest the amount of things in this bed are gonna completely cover that straw so while I think straw in a vegetable bed looks super tidy sorry over here not so much but it's fine because it's going to be covered um so a couple things I have yellow squash there's a couple different varieties I started growing and they're producing already oh let me back up so super excited there I success a, I succession sewed them so I'm getting them at like a couple different intervals um, this bed is full of zinnias, sunflowers, more zinnias, more status, yarrow, um, the cabbage, there's the squash, basil. Some of the basil is going to be to eat, some of it's going to be to go to flower, and I have plenty to separate. There's alyssum. These are daikon radish. I am so excited about these. I'm not gonna pull it out now because I don't wanna waste it. But I grew daikon radish for a couple reasons. So, hold on, let me turn the camera on. So, daikon radish is edible, but there's also a couple reasons why I'm growing it. So, for one, I wanna put it in my kimchi because I'm, like I said, I'm obsessed with the kimchi and I wanted it to go with my bok choy. I was worried that the daikon radish in the bok choy weren't going to be ready at the same time. Sorry, I got interrupted. I don't know really where I was, but anyways. So this daikon radish actually is producing um, a root already within a month of planting from seed. So that means I'm going to be able to pair it with my um, bok choy, make my kimchi, but also 
I won't be needing all of it because I planted a lot. I'm going to be um, letting some of it go to flower so I can get the seed. But also, I am using some of the foliage to deter root knot nematodes in the soil. So I'm going to let the plant grow. Once it um, flowers, I'm going to turn over the fo foliage into the soil, let it break down, and supposedly it deters the root knot nematodes. And here in Florida, we have sandy root knot nematode ridden soil. And I have seen it sometimes on a couple pepper plants. So I really don't want to, um, you know, keep that problem going. So we're going to try that. So that's a little bit about the daikon radish. I will put what variety I'm growing in the description below. Moving on. Um, like I said, I have more zinnias. This is the tatsoi that's going to seed. Super excited about this. This is a great spinach replacement here in Florida. This is either broccoli or cauliflower. I don't remember which one. Um, I hope it heads up. I have doubts about it because of our heat. I think I started it way too late, but my husband said he wanted broccoli and cauliflower, so that's what I'm growing. Um, there's already stuff starting to bloom, like this yarrow. Um, this has been blooming for a couple weeks now. The alyssum. The status is getting some size to it. Another yellow squash, a different type of basil, this tiny little pepper plant. The pepper plants I got um, overwintered okay, um, but then, or I, that I had overwintered okay, but they're kind of struggling, so we'll see. Oh, here's another, I think that's another squash. I think I planted another round of squash, uh, yellow squash. Um, here's another, oh, that's, whatever this is, is the opposite of that. So I think this might be cauliflower. I don't remember. Um, there's acorn squash growing. Already got a baby acorn squash. More of that Easter bonnet, alyssum, more status. So this whole bed is, um, the flowers are status, zinnias, sunflowers, alyssum, yarrow, the daikon radish once it goes to flower, uh, dill, uh, what else? I think that's about it um, for now. So yeah, more zinnias, more daikon radish. I actually think this might be a loofah. No, I don't know. We'll see when it comes up. The first leaf will tell. Nope, this is an oak tree. <laughs> um, this status is elongating and getting a flower spike on it. More zinnias, sunflowers, yellow squash. This squash isn't going to make it. I'm just going to pull that off. Don't want to waste the energy. Um, there's some nasturtiums back there, although I think they're not going to make it. Those are spaghetti squash. Um, see more yarrow, daikon radish, dill. And then the very end is my potatoes and then my onions. Oh, and then I planted some watermelon seeds right down there. So my daughter wanted watermelons, so that's what we planted. There's a few in there as well. I'll thin them out because I don't need, you know, 10 watermelon seeds or 10 watermelon plants. Um, so pretty excited about all that. This pea uh, is just hanging on by a thread. It's starting to flower. I'm just letting it drape over the side of this root pouch. It is what it is. And then we got, like I said, we're back to the front. We got more flower or carrots growing, more peas, and then the dill pot. Um, the key lime trees, I leave lights on them just because I think they look pretty. Maybe one day they'll get tangled in there, but until then, I'm going to leave it. Um, so, yeah. And so, the coral honeysuckle kind of drapes in to the bed there. I have that um, window there, hoping to trail something up to it, maybe, if anything grows. <laughs> and so, yeah. So, that's one final look. Everything's looking super green and pretty.
Um, I can't wait for the rest of the spring to come because it's gonna start raining hopefully soon and I really am tired of watering constantly. Oh look, the dog's eating the tomatoes. Benelli, what are you doing? Hi. Hi, babe. She's so funny. She just ate my daughter's grilled cheese. So she's outside. You're back. So that concludes the vegetable garden tour. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the backyard. Bye.